Two Stuart 5A steam engines in the workshop, part two. Checking the measurements using an old Stuart 5A drawing, comparing the features of the two engines and making some slight adjustments. For copyright reasons, I can't show the details of the drawing. The only thing I can say is this drawing was from Stuart models when they were based at Henley on Thames, so it's quite old. And because I can't show you the drawing, you will have to take my word for it. The dimensions match the drawing. My primary concerns were the length of the eccentric rods, and they're both fine, exactly the same as the drawing. And the dimensions of this Stuart 5A are also to the drawing, so there's no problem there. It sounds a bit asthmatic in this clip because it's running in slow motion. And despite its bent crankshaft and the ugliest pair of drain cocks in the world, it actually runs okay. While on the subject of drain cocks, these in my opinion are in the wrong place. When the engine is in steam and you open these drain cocks, all of the condensate pours onto the flywheel. This in my opinion is the better place to fit drain cocks. This is the 5A with the bent crankshaft and I will be making a series about modifying this, but not yet because it's not mine. I really can't live with this at all, look at the difference in the handles on the drain cocks. I may be being picky in this case, but these are extremely visible parts of this engine and they do not look good. When I get around to modifying this engine, I will plug the holes where the original drain cocks are and drill two more on this side just like the other engine. Mainly in this episode I'm having a good look at the engine that I built. I didn't build all of it, I just made the important parts. Here you can see some side movement on the flywheel. This was caused when I fitted the key, which is moving the flywheel slightly out of alignment. Plus there is some side to side movement on the crankshaft itself. Now I know that the part sizes are all correct, I'm going to tweak the eccentric. I'd just like to mention that I'm using the Allen key through the hole in the eccentric strap and I'm adjusting the innermost eccentric, the one that is currently driving the valve gear. This adjustment is critical, and to be honest, what this is telling me is the fact that the slide valve in the valve chest is not precisely in the right position. During the adjustment of this eccentric, I have a very small amount of compressed air being admitted to the engine. You have to be very careful though with larger engines, even a very small amount of compressed air will make the engine want to run. While I'm adjusting the eccentric, what you can't see is my other hand is on the flywheel holding it steady. As I make these minute adjustments to advance or retard the timing, you can hear the difference. With the adjustment in this setting, it's not quite so even. Even though I'm not adjusting the eccentric nearest to the camera, when I put it into reverse, I'm just doing an AB comparison. Each time I'm moving with the Allen key, I'm adjusting the grub screw that holds the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft on the innermost set. By the sound of the engine now, I think that's the closest I'm going to get it. Besides, the men in white coats have arrived and it's time to go back to the asylum. This job can drive you mad. When do you stop? I'll just move it a little bit more. I suppose it's a bit like stop motion photography. Once upon a time I had a webcam that took individual frames. I actually animated a small model aeroplane pencil sharpener. It took me about an hour to achieve a five second video. This adjustment was a mistake because now the timing is worse than it was before I adjusted it. I know I'll run the engine at a high speed. That's better, now I can start the process all over again. I need to tap the outer eccentric sheave back into position as it's moved. And after making a very small adjustment to the outer eccentric sheave, I'm tightening up the grub screw with the Allen key. The tweaking in real time took a while. I did it a lot more than I'm showing in the video because I am a trifle obsessive. I don't think I have OCD. I might have OD, but no C. I don't seem to have the compulsive part, just the obsession and of course the disorder. In this clip I'm checking the tightness of the bolts 
that hold the two big end brasses together, and now they're both slightly tighter than they were. Listen to this when I turn the compressed air on. It hisses and then it pops. The pop is the slide valve slamming into the port face. Well, there's still a bit of a clunk, but please bear in mind that the engine is on a soundboard, which makes it worse than it actually is. And it is, after all, running using compressed air. Steam engines behave very differently when they're running on steam. And near the end of this video, there are a few clips showing the engine running on steam in the garden. I think I'm going to have to stop doing this now. It's time to try on my new straight jacket. I really do think that the slide valve needs a very, very tiny adjustment because it runs differently in forward and reverse. And all of the valve gear parts are correct as shown on the drawing. Here's an interesting experiment. It achieves nothing, you can't reverse the engine. I rotated the crankshaft through 90 degrees and clamped the eccentric in this position. So they're both working exactly the same way. This is a useless and pointless thing to do, but I just thought I'd show what happens when both of the eccentric sheaves are in the same place on the crankshaft. Once I'd recorded this video clip, I put the eccentrics back to where they were supposed to be. When I re-timed the eccentric, you can see that at one end of the stroke, the compressed air has been admitted too early. I think that the slide valve is not 100%. I'll be looking at this in a video later on in the series. To be honest, this is more than good enough. With this eccentric setting, the clunk is only audible at one end of the crankshaft's rotation. When you see me doing things like this, please don't write in and tell me that it's wrong. Steam engines can be reversed at any speed, because what you're not seeing is, in between the reverse function, it stops. There's a really large steel mill rolling engine in Sheffield, and even that, which is an immense machine, reverses incredibly quickly. Time for a high speed run. Health and safety warning, always keep your hand away from the engine when it's running. Don't do this. This is an extract from a video that I made when I first completed the engine. It's in the garden at the house that I used to live in and you will notice that the exhaust pipe is shorter. I extended this so it didn't drop water all over the engine and the flywheel. You can hear that the engine runs very sweetly at all speeds when it's running on steam. Here's the engine running with the cylinder drains open. And that is it from me in this video. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.